Okay folks, so let's be clear. I wanted to do a video about this already, but then Piepacker approached me with their Kickstarter campaign, a link for which is in the description, and offered to give me sponsorship for it. So... Bye. Oh, come on! Honestly, I might be rich if I didn't spend all my money on retro tech. But what's important here is the contract explicitly states that I can give my own balanced opinion. So let's take a look at this internet based retro gaming party fest and work out whether it's actually worth investing in. Starting with. What a bizarre name, Pie Packer. I honestly thought this was a job vacancy in my local bakery when I got the email, but no, it's a Kickstarter campaign that at its core offers multiplayer retro gaming over the internet. Perfect during a pandemic, and I guess it still works pretty well outside of a pandemic. Look, they've got a video which explains everything in a pleasing graphical manner. You can play retro games, you can play them multiplayer, you can see your friends, which you might not want to after a while of not seeing them, and so they can wear a filter to make it easier for you. Here's some of the games. And here's the Pi Reader. Now this is what really grabbed my attention because it's an actual piece of hardware you can plug into your computer that allows you to pass your own cartridges through, so you can play against your friends using just your game cartridge like they've just popped around to play a multiplayer game of micro machines pretty impressive you don't even need the pie packer premium membership in conjunction with it this thing will work with the standard pie packer access which is free after beta featuring four usb controller inputs and handling everything through cloud emulation Depending on your pledge level, there are three adapters, NES, SNES, and Mega Drive or Genesis, and then you can play your game library through Pie Packer and with friends across Tinternet, which is nice. I really wanted to get hold of a Pie Reader because they look interesting, but I was told they're not ready yet. But there's plenty of updates on them and I've got some in-development shots which look promising. But the core functionality is in the cloud service itself, so let's take a closer look at that. Ultimately, it means I can play games with friends and I don't have to leave the house, which is perfect. I've got beta access to the platform, which is what you get for the $40 pledge, along with some additional perks. Now, Throbbing Cherry. That's the default username I was given. I did not request that. I didn't type it in. That's what I got, okay? You can change it, but I hadn't worked out how to at this point. But look at all of these titles. Whoa. And you get a preview of them too. There's a recently played section, featured, multiplayer, platformer, shooter, sports, fighting, puzzle, racing, indie. Immediately titles like Street Racer, Descent 2 and Zero Tolerance jump out at me. I'm going to kick off with Descent 2 in single player mode. All you do is click on the game you want to play, enable microphone and camera access in Chrome or Edge, and away you go. By the way, at present it does only work in Chrome or Edge, so no Netscape Navigator for you, I'm afraid, although there is mobile TV and desktop apps on the way. So once you're in, you get this handy little menu at the bottom which allows you to access key bindings and get a bit of information about the game. But, you know, this is Descent 2, and it plays like Descent 2, it feels like Descent 2. It's not the PC version, but then that wouldn't feel right, this is very much a console setting. If you don't want to use the keyboard, you can use pretty much any other controller that works with your system. Plug it in and you are away. So. Main question, input lag. Well, yes, there is a slight input lag, but it's within tolerances. It certainly didn't put my playing off. 
Handily, the perfect game to test it is already on here, Worms Pinball, and trust me, this is down to my god-awful playing rather than any amount of serious lag. If you don't want to look at yourself whilst playing, you can turn the camera off or the microphone off for any time, or just apply one of those filters. So that'll do nicely. There's a save state, so you can save whatever game you are in, wherever you are, and with premium membership, you should get unlimited save slots for each game. Rewind functionality and other features like HD graphic upscaling also come with premium membership, as do early access to new games, and the ability to use your own ROMs with friends in a private room. And, you know, you just need a digital ROM for that purpose. Given as it's in beta, I don't have details on compatibility in that regard, or on the Pi Reader, and I think it's only geared up for NES, SNES, and Mega Drive, just like the physical version. But premium is clocking in at, well, it wasn't $90 on Early Bird, or $180 with a Pi Reader. And as this is the only time they're offering lifetime premium access, it seems like a good time to get it. Because, come on, the beauty here is multiplayer. You can play with up to four friends simply by sending them a link. They don't even need the platform themselves, which is nice. Just send them the link, they click it, and they're in. Lovely job. How they do this legally is because the ROM isn't sent to your friends. Instead, Pi Packer just duplicates the video output remotely to your buddies, like a virtual desktop. And their controllers are linked in just like you would be playing local multiplayer. So let's do some playing and find out whether that arrangement causes any lag. Look at that rat. Look at that rat. Oh, it's got a goal. Oh, God. Oh, yes. Oh, so close. Oh, God. Oh, God. That's not fair. It's like a ski slalom. You have to go through gates. It's blowing, it's blowing bubbles. It's, I can see it. Oh God, <laughs> look at the cats! Oh, look at how sad my cat is. <laughs> so as it stands, you can't play games like Zero Tolerance or Descent 2 multiplayer, because in real life that required two systems and therefore two ROMs. I think Zero Tolerance being in the multiplayer section is actually a mistake in this beta release. As for lag, well that will depend on the distance between the friends you're playing with and Pi Packer's servers. But all indications are that it's playable, and if one player has any lag, then it won't affect the others, which is good. It certainly wasn't a problem in any of my tests. You can also play single player games and just have your friends there to watch, just like when you only owned one control pad, but had your mates round for tea. Or just if you want a private mini streaming arena, you can use it as well. I've got to admit, there's such a novelty in playing some of these titles online. Street Racer for the SNES. I've played that locally with two players, but across the internet, it's really nice. I'm a big fan of this technology already, and that's me talking, not for sponsorship. There's over 60 licensed games at present, from NES to PlayStation 1, including a load of indie titles which are decent, we had a lot of fun playing those online, and a lot more are in the works. Plus, if you get a Pi Reader, well, then you've got that as well, and whatever games you have. If you don't get one in the Kickstarter campaign, you should be able to purchase one afterwards as an add-on as well. Obviously, I can't speak about that functionality at this stage, as I simply haven't seen one in the flesh. All I can say is it sounds and looks good on paper. Ultimately, I only agreed to do this video because Pi Packer has the beta version up and running, and it's good. So that bodes well for the rest of the project, and there are lots of updates on Twitter and on the Kickstarter page. If you are interested, then check out the Kickstarter campaign below. The digital pass will give you early access, and then the base platform is free after that. Digital Pass Eternal will give you premium membership even after Early Access, and Pi Reader Starter will give you the Pi Reader and Early Access. Pi Reader Bundle Infinite will give you the Reader and the Premium Lifetime membership, and there's a load of other pledges if you want more. Just be sure to check out what you're getting, as some pledges include Pi Packer Lifetime membership, some just include 
the Pi Reader with early access. You know, just, just read the print. They say the Kickstarter will be the only time they're offering lifetime premium membership, and as it stands, they've already smashed through their target, which has opened up the Bring Your Own Game Boy and Advance ROMs. So you can play Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games as well. And then you can also have local multiplayer mode, which is another goal. So that all sounds quite promising. I've included a link to their FAQ as well, which contains some useful information. Personally, I had a lot of fun with Pie Packer, and there's a lot of promising features that look good. So I'm gonna keep using it, but you know, make your own mind up, take a look at the link below, and um, yeah, see what's best for you. Anyway, thanks for watching. I've been Nostalgia Nerd. Toodaloo.